World's most expensive car. A car that costs more than penthouses? Indeed. The world's most expensive car is millions of dollars. Ferrari manufactures it, and hence the car's prices comes from its brand. It was sold for a reported $45 to $50 million in auctions. In this video, we'll be looking at Ferrari GT250, a classic antique car that has been sold at exorbitant prices. The car had no name when it first appeared because of its unusual appearance. Ferrari employees dubbed it El Mastro or the monster. The year was 1961 and the date was August 11th, 1961. Monza is the location. The grandstands at the racetrack were empty as technicians rolled this new Ferrari prototype into the pits under the watchful eye of Giotto Bizzarini, the brilliant designer and engineer who deserves more credit than anyone else getting the car this far. The car was unpainted, its tarnished aluminum body the color of a stormy sky. Its front end was particularly odd, with intakes that made it appear to be gasping for air through a trained mouth and a trio of nostrils. Nevertheless, Willy Maris, a Belgian Ferrari team driver, hammered the engine and dragged the car out onto the track for its first shakedown. Bizzarini was tense. Enzo Ferrari, the tyrant's boss, expected the new racing car to be a world beater. Meanwhile, Maris, the driver, always made people nervous. Willy Maris had been involved in many shunts and became known as a car crasher. Enzo's deputy Franco Gossi recalled. Ferrari has a long and illustrious history of producing stunning automobiles. The prancing horse logo has become synonymous with class, speed, and luxury in the decades since Ferrari debuted. Ferrari's vintage sports and touring cars are now valued at millions. As a result, gearheads from all over the world gathered at auctions to outbid each other and take legendary home Ferraris. The 250 GTO is one of the most valuable Ferraris of all time. This car has broken multiple world record auction prices over the year and is one of that any car enthusiast would treasure. However, Ferrari's influence on the automotive industry isn't limited to luxury sports car. It's also about winning. Since its factory door opened in Marinello in the 1940s, the Italian brand has been at the forefront of motorsports. Scuderia Ferrari produced drivers such as Michael Schumacher, Niki Lauda, and Alberto Ascari. Ferrari's legacy owes a lot to the GTO. So let's see what the 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO cost today. 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO Most Expensive Auction Price The most dedicated Ferrari collectors will go to any length to obtain a classic model. This is demonstrated by the exorbitant sums wealthy fans have paid to add historic Ferraris to their collections. The 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO is no exception. And in 2018, a record price was paid at auctions for a classic car. At a soda piece auction in California, a bid of $48.4 million was enough to secure the famous Ferrari for one lucky investor. The red 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO at the auctions was expected to fetch between $45 million and $60 million. While the final bid of $48.4 million is substantial, it falls short of the figure expected for the Ferrari. Perhaps even more impressive, a 1963 Ferrari 250 GTO was privately sold for $80 million in 2018. Moreover, every Ferrari 250 GTO that left the factory was hand-built, adding to the allure of this iconic GT. Some of its best specs. Ferrari has some of the best engine and exhaust noises in the industry. The 250 GTO is powered by a 300 horsepower 3-liter V12 engine that could push drivers to the back of their seats. This engine has already been tested on the racetrack and is the same one found in the 250 Testarossa. Ferrari restructured an already impressive engine to create one of the most competitive prancing horse machines to the, the track has ever seen. Its 0 to 60 miles per hour of 6.1 seconds ranks it among the best Ferraris ever produced. While the performance under the hood is impressive, the classic and elegant styling of the Ferrari 250 GTO is difficult to overlook. Most Ferraris are designed for their beauty and power, and the 250 GTO is no exception. Ferrari worked hard on the 250 GTO's aerodynamics to make it as fast and stable as possible. It's a simple design, but it was developed in a wind tunnel and fine-tuned to perfection. Unlike any modern Ferraris, anyone fortunate enough to own a 250 GTO will not be able to enjoy a luxurious interior. The interior of the Ferrari 250 GTO is that of a race car because it was designed for the track. There are no frills here, which adds to its appeal. How much the 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO cost in today's money? When you consider how much a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO can fetch at auction, you wish you had a time machine to go back in time and buy one. The Ferrari 250 GTO would cost new buyers $18,000 from the factory in 1962. Adjusted for inflation, that price is now $163,000 
$53, which is still significantly less than the auction price for the 250 GTO. The 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO sold at auctions for $48.4 million is nearly 300 times its current value. Production history of the Ferrari 250 GTO The Ferrari 250 GTO is expensive because the Italian manufacturer produced so few of them. For example, only 36 were produced during a half production run route. Only 36 were produced during a brief production run from 1962 to 1964. These race cars were built for the track and competed in the FIA's Group 3 category. During its heyday, the Ferrari 250 GTO had an impressive track pedigree thanks to this design. Victories at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the Tour de France Automobile and numerous Grand Prix make it an icon. The 250 GTO was a force to be reckoned with from the moment it hit the track. The vintage Ferrari's performance exceeded all expectations and quickly became a collectible because so few were made, obtaining an original 1962 Ferrari's 250 GTO is nearly impossible. As a result, anyone with one won't want to part with it, and anyone who wants to buy one will need a lot of cash. Racing The 250 GTO made its racing debut at the 1962 Sebring 12 hours driven by American Phil Hill and Belgian Oliver Gendeblen. Although they were initially irritated that they were driving a GT-class car rather than one of the full-race 250 Testarossas competing in the prototype class, the experienced pair surprised themselves by finishing second overall behind Butler and Scrafiotti's Testarossa. Ferrari would go on to win the FIA's International Championships for GT manufacturers over 2000cc class in 1962, 1963 and 1964. With the 250 GTO racing in each of those years, 250 GTOs also won the Tour de France Automobile in 1963 and 1964, capping Ferrari's nine-year race dominance. Only a few other GT-class models were consistently competitive with the 250 GTO during the 1962-1964 racing seasons. The Jaguar E-Type, Aston Martin DB4, GT Zagato, DP212, DP214, DP215, and AC Cobras were among them. Many 250 GTOs were raced by independent racing teams and private drivers in addition to official Scuderia Ferrari entries. At the time, it was common for 250 GTO drivers to compete against other 250 GTO drivers. The 250 GTO was one of the final front-engine cars to compete at the highest level of sports car racing. Following the 1964 season, the 250 GTO gradually fell out of favor. By 1965, Scuderia Ferrari had retired the 250 GTO from racing, leaving only a few independent teams and private owners to compete in endurance races, rallies, and hill climbs. By 1967, the 250 GTO had almost completely disappeared from international racing, with only a few rally and hill climb results to show for it. Some of the surviving 250 GTOs were used in regional races before the development of the collector market and associated vintage racing and show events. In contrast, others were used as road cars. To be homologated for Group 3 Grand Touring Car Racing, FIA regulations in 1962 required at least 100 examples of a car to be built. Ferrari only produced 36 250 GTOs. The three additional 330 GTO cars with the 4-liter 330 engine, identifiable by the large hump on the bonnet, are sometimes included in the total production number, bringing the total to 39. When FIA inspectors arrived to confirm that 100 examples had been built, it became a popular myth that Enzo Ferrari shuffled the same cars between different locations, giving the impression that the full complement of 100 cars was present. In reality, there was no need for deceptions because the production of the 250 GTO was covered by the homologation of the earlier 250 GT Berlinetta SWB model. These homologation papers were issued in 1960, but extensions were requested and granted several times between 1961 and 1964, allowing Ferrari to make modifications not covered by the original specifications such as changes to the engine, transmissions, and suspension. Furthermore, because more than 100 bodies had been built to the previous 250 GT SWB specifications, FIA regulations allowed for a new body to be designed, resulting in the development of the new 250 GTO body style. And thus, this is the impressive GT250, which suspects that could rival supercars. There is no doubt as to why it is one of the world's most expensive. What do you think of the Ferrari 250? Let us know in the comments down below. Then make sure to like.